NVIDIA's market capitalization has exceeded $5 trillion. Once again, refreshing human history. The U.S. tech community, especially the AI industry, is filled with cheers, indicating strong AI demand and capital pursuit. Jensen Huang delivered a two-hour speech at NVIDIA GTC 2025 on the 28th. He praised the Trump administration's America First policy for promoting the return of AI manufacturing and discussed China-U.S. chip trade. The order visibility for Blackwell and the next-generation Rubin chips has reached $500 billion, covering the next five quarters. The company will build seven AI supercomputers for the U.S. Department of Energy and launch domestic AI chip production in the U.S. The company has reached a $1 billion cooperation with Nokia to rebuild the global communication system, focusing on AI plus 6G. It also mentioned a robot demonstration with Figure AI. Future technology outlooks cover quantum computing, physical AI, robotics, nuclear fusion, autonomous driving, and more. Jensen Huang emphasized that AI is not a bubble, but driven by real demand with strong user willingness to pay. NVIDIA's stock price rose 5%, keeping its market cap steadily above $5 trillion. He also revealed that the White House has approved chip sales to China, but China currently does not welcome them. When my channel was just established a year ago, I made a video discussing the US AI bubble issue, with NVIDIA and ChatGPT as the focus. Moreover, I predicted very accurately that Americans would not stop hyping this bubble. It would only grow larger. However, I also pointed out that the U.S. cannot convert such massive national investment into real productivity in the short term because China firmly controls the core of the global manufacturing industry chain. U.S. companies will only continue burning money in AI data centers, large models, and other areas. It is impossible for Silicon Valley to realize huge market valuations by relying on ChatGPT to answer user questions or Sora to generate 10-second short videos. In 2013, Jensen Huang spoke in broken Chinese at the Xiaomi 3 phone launch event in Beijing to promote NVIDIA's Tegra 4 chip. He humbly said he was also a Xiaomi fan and asked the audience on site, Are you all Xiaomi fans? The entire interaction video was indeed very embarrassing despite the fans' extreme enthusiasm. At that time, NVIDIA's market cap was less than $10 billion, while Xiaomi's market valuation exceeded NVIDIA's. Over the past 12 years, Xiaomi has been one of the fastest-growing tech companies in China and even globally. Its industry ecosystem covers mobile phones, laptops, tablets, smart homes, electric vehicles, and other fields, forming a huge tech ecosystem. Lei Jun's product launch events copy Apple at the pixel level, mocked by Chinese netizens as liops, satirizing him as a poor imitator of jobs. Today, Xiaomi has a market cap of about $150 billion, ranking 127 globally, and is a true top-tier tech company. Yet during the same period, NVIDIA's market cap has expanded 500 times. Relying on the cryptocurrency frenzy, NVIDIA's market cap surged from a low of $5 billion to $200 billion in a few years. Then, with the AI wave, NVIDIA's market cap skyrocketed dozens of times again, reaching today's astonishing $5 trillion. NVIDIA is just a microcosm of the U.S. tech bubble. New tech upstarts like OpenAI often exceed $100 billion in valuation during their startup phase. But if we look back from 2010 to now at the tech concepts hyped by Silicon Valley, we will find that reality is far crueler than imagined. Take Elon Musk, the benchmark figure in U.S. industrialization, as an example. His Tesla not only surpasses the combined valuation of global traditional auto industry giants, but its sales volume and profits are completely inferior to these traditional companies. Musk's future promises to investors surprisingly come from AI, including robots. Musk's product competitiveness in the traditional electric vehicle field has completely fallen behind China's BYD, and in the advanced humanoid robot field he repeatedly boasts about. China's Unitree is the undisputed industry leader. 
Many Chinese companies have already deployed industrial robots in BYD, Geely, and other auto companies, executing production tasks. They just do not hype as much as Musk. I have said many times that Musk is my idol, and I am not criticizing him because of China-US competition. If we measure him with precisely quantifiable indicators, we will reach the same conclusion. More than a decade ago, Musk boasted that landing on Mars would be achieved in the early 2020s. Later revised to 2025, and now 2025 is about to pass, let alone landing on Mars. SpaceX's moon landing plan is still far from ready. I can give a clear prediction here. China's moon landing plan will be achieved before the US. No matter how SpaceX hypes in the media about how advanced their rocket technology is, it cannot forcibly execute a moon landing mission without extensive reliability verification. That would be equivalent to buying a one-way ticket for astronauts. For another example, concepts like cryptocurrency, blockchain, and Web3 were hyped by Silicon Valley as decisive technological revolutions to change humanity's future. I have always been dismissive of this. They do have meaning, but not to the exaggerated extent claimed. Nowadays, when mentioning cryptocurrency, besides celebrities like Trump and Musk issuing coins to harvest leaks, converting traffic and power into money, or participating in money laundering to maintain gray industry ecosystems, it has not changed the world as proclaimed. Similar bubbles include the repeatedly hyped metaverse. Even Facebook's parent company changed its name to Meta, and Apple heavily invested in virtual reality. Yet the fact is that this concept is now hardly mentioned by anyone. In the process of these repeated hypes, capital has achieved frenzy, and the U.S. stock market has maintained prosperity. But U.S. competitiveness is declining at a speed visible to the naked eye. When facing China, this strong competitor, the U.S., apart from relying on allies to maintain chip process advantages and the ecosystem advantages accumulated over years in operating systems and productivity software, has almost nothing else that can compete with China. This channel likes making predictions because predictions best reflect the blogger's professional level. Of course, some predictions need a long time to verify, while others are validated in just a few months. So far, my prediction accuracy rate, whether about the US or India, has been very high. I am not showing off, but using prediction accuracy to avoid many boring low-level debates. Predictions about AI make me feel more pressure because they involve too broad a scope and too large a time span, making them hard to verify in the short term. And as I mentioned multiple times in videos, the US investment in AI is a national all and that does not allow failure. The U.S. will certainly use its dominance over global finance to desperately maintain this huge bubble. Because when it bursts and returns to rational value, U.S. hegemony will also be buried with it.